Hi everyone, I'm Stafford. So I better launch in pretty quick. I'm going to give a little talk on getting vector tiles out of PostGIS and it's kind of more related to web development. What are vector tiles first up? Basically web maps made up of spatial data, right? Which are basically made up of tiles. So tiles are pieces of maps that are loaded when the map is zoomed to an area. And that saves you from loading an entire data set every time that the user goes to a certain area, right? Just a bit of background. So for example, the base map in Google Maps is a bunch of image tiles. Overlays are sent to the browser as tiles too. This makes them faster to render rather than pulling down the whole data set, like I said. But even if these overlays um, originate as vector data, they're often sent to the browser as raster image tiles as well. Um, you just get an image of the data overlaid on your map, but that doesn't allow any interactivity or any attributes, anything like that. So what if we could overlay real vectors over our map, then we'd have all the attributes available and we could allow some interactivity. So there are ways to do this. I'm just going to talk about a really simple, quick and easy way. So how do we get vectors into our web app? We have our vector data in a database and our front end, right? So how do we get those vectors from our database into the front end? Um, one way to do this is with a tile server, something that cuts up these vectors into tiles and delivers them to the client on a needs basis. There's options. Carto is pretty expensive. You can have a web feature service out of GeoServer, but you need like a whole Linux box to run that. So sometimes that's overkill. There's other options like uh, Togola and PostTile. I think one's written in Go, one's written in Python. So you can run them pretty minimally on like App Engine or something like that. But for something really simple, I feel like this is just all too complex. Perhaps we could just return GeoJSON directly from our database and view that in the front end. But the problem is big data. This data set here is all the tropical cyclones for the last 30 years. If you were to return that from your database as vector data, it comes up to about 870 megs as GeoJSON. So you just can't feasibly pull that into the web browser, you know, every time someone wants to view it. So it's inefficient, it's slow as, and it's simple, but it just won't do for big data sets. We need tiles, so how can we do that simply? Well, there's a really simple way to do it without a special tile server. Something called Mapbox Vector Tiles. PostGIS now supports this directly. I don't, this isn't like totally cutting edge or anything, but it's um, just a good simple way of doing things. So we don't really need a tile server for it. We can actually do it directly from PostGIS where we can you know, make our query and the rows that we want to return, we can return them as vector tiles for our view extent. We just need to supply bounding box information and the layer we want and pass that to the database in some SQL. So I'll just quickly kind of go through it. Um, basically, we set up a database, we create a PostGIS extension, and you know you can just literally import a shape file with this tool like uh, shape to PG into your database. And this is what our ba like a super basic application might look like, right? So this is then those um, lines from our database with all the attributes available in the browser. So I'll just go on. So our front end, like in our basic application structure, I've just knocked something up with like open layers for the map and that makes requests to um, just a very basic back end. So that's just wrapping a request to our database in a very simple API. So that accepts a request from our front end that specifies our bounding box and the layer that we want. And then we have a service that actually like um, passes these parameters to the database and returns our MVT. So basically it looks something like this. Um, so it's super simple. It's basically all the, you know, all the workings are in the SQL here, like this function ST as MVT. So it's a really cool feature in PostGIS. Um, just quickly the SQL there, like that will convert the geometry of our database rows into MVT coordinate space. We take our bounding box at the front end passes in and we convert that into that space and we run an intersect between the rows in our database with that bounding box and that just gives us back the rows that we're interested in. Yeah, so I'll just play this little demo. It's really rough, I just knocked it up for the talk, but um, it gives you the idea. Can you guys play that? 
So the benefits of having all that uh, line data loads in like two seconds, and then we have all of the attributes for all of those lines in the browser and can display them instantly. When we zoom in, um, PostGIS will actually supply more accurate geometry. So when it's zoomed out, it's just an approximate geometry, so it doesn't waste time with too many nodes in the data that it's returning. And you can see those tiles just loading on demand as we pan. So then that whole massive data set is back in there in like, you know, less than two seconds. Yes, how many lines do you reckon were in there? <laughs> Any guesses? A million? A million? Pretty close. 270,000. <laughs> Woo! Okay, thanks for having me. And thank you to the developers who made these tools. That's what it's all about. <laughs>